And next we have John Kessich, also from Pennsylvania. Welcome to John. Hello. Um, a month ago, I attended a town hall meeting hosted by Scott Bruner of Shell Appalachia. I presented Mr. Bruner with a list of questions that I asked him to answer in writing. I haven't heard back yet, and frankly, I don't expect to because Shell and the whole industry is based on lies, and they're not going to answer my questions. If you want to see them, you can look on my webpage, uh, cleanupgas.org, and uh, I'd like to just mention a few of the questions that people should be thinking about. First off, why shouldn't we expect the same kind of ozone and smog that they're seeing down in the Barnett Shale and out in Wyoming in the Pinedale and Jonah gas fields? The second issue is water. I know of 13 people in Tioga County, Pennsylvania, who have been impacted by gas drilling and had their water contaminated. Very few of those have made the press, and very few of those have been reported to DEP. So the questions here are, why don't DEP and the EPA require gas companies to report alleged incidents? And also, if there's anyone in the media here, I wish that you would go down there and find out how many filtration systems have been installed in Tioga County and how many residents have been forced to sign non-disclosure agreements. Yes. Yeah. 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 The third area I'd like you to consider is the re residual waste trucks that you see on the highways. Every single one of those should probably be a hazardous waste truck. That's right. That's in case you don't know it, in 1989, the EPA, despite overwhelming evidence in their own study, decided to exempt oil and gas waste from hazardous waste requirements. That's wrong, and we need to do something about that. We need to ask people, why is this hazardous waste being treated as though it were just residual waste? Uh, the next thing I'd like to discuss briefly is bonding. Act 13, which was mentioned before, introduced a very strange idea of bonding. The most that a driller is required to pay for bonding their well is $10,000. The cap on a, a, their bond, regardless of how many wells they have, is $600,000. So if you have 1,000 wells, that's $600 to bond each well. Now, what you need to know is that three wells were recently plugged over in Dimmick at a cost of $700,000 each. This is an insane bond requirement, less than 1% of the cost to clean up the mess. How many of these companies do you think are gonna properly plug their wells when they get done with them? Zilch. Finally, uh, also on my website, you can take a look at a standard gas lease that my wife and I were offered. The questions here are, how can our government allow such a predatory, one-sided document to be the standard? And the other question that I have is, how can the courts decide that anyone who signed one of these things gave informed consent. If you read through it, you'll see that no one in their right mind would sign that knowingly. That's about all I have to say for now. Thank you very much. Oh, the website name is cleanupgas.org. Thank you. Thank you so much, John.